this mansion is unhinged. These ghosts, they're running from something. Why are you looking for me? A ghost who haunts other ghosts? That's not fair. I hope you like surprises. You're going to be here for quite a while. <laughs> Disney's Haunted Mansion. Did he look human? Sort of. And then he carried his head inside a hat box. What part of that is sort of? Rated PG-13. First of all, congratulations on the film. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So how do you feel now that the film has had its premiere and we're just a week away from its release? You know, it's um, it's an odd feeling. We've, I've been working for a really long time uh, and at a level of intensity that I didn't know for sure if I had in me. Uh, and and it kind of feels in a lot of ways like we're just getting started. You know, this is a movie that's coming to a very crowded marketplace. There's a lot of uh, what they call tall trees uh, before our movie comes out. And I feel like it's a movie that a lot of folks are going to have to discover um, that, you know, uh, probably, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that a lot of folks come out opening weekend, but I'm also hopeful people keep coming out uh, to the movie. So I, I'm really curious to see what it does in the world. Um, the way these movies are made now, people don't get to see them months and months in advance, like, you know, before. So right. it's sort of like this is the final part of making a movie is how is it received and what does, you know, what do audiences do with it and what, do, what does the culture decide it is? Um, that's always like the last part of it and you have very little control over that part of it so I'm curious uh, you know as to what the world makes of it so it's probably like a mix of like anxiety and excitement at the same time yeah and relief you know like oh I can sleep Right, so. <laughs> so the Haunted Mansion is a classic obviously that we all grew up watching and I only recently learned, I guess I was like the last person to find out that it was actually adapted from the ride and not vice versa. I know I'm probably late on that fact, but so tell me about your personal experience with the Haunted Mansion ride. I wrote the ride when I was like nine years old and I wrote the, the Haunted Mansion ride in Disney World first. My mom, um, you know, I grew up in Houston, Texas. We, we saved up the money. We drove to New Orleans and then we flew out of New Orleans to Orlando and Haunted Mansion was the first thing we went on and it just blew my little mind. Uh, I didn't, I knew, I was old enough to understand that this was all like make-believe and special right. effects, but I had no idea how they did it. And it really got under my skin and it guides your eye. It, it uses sound. It uses smoke and mirrors. It uses production design. It relies on, um, you know, on on props and puppets and 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 things like that to to affect its audience. And um, I just was always so kind of mesmerized by it. So back then, could you ever imagine that today you'd be, you know, directing a film like this? Absolutely not. I mean, when I was working there, I, I think the Eddie Murphy Haunted Mansion movie was already out. And, and I, I had no reason to think that they would ever make another one or, you know, anything. I actually really didn't understand what, how, how exactly I would even apply um, all the things that I was sensing from that ride and from those rides into my film work. But I just knew that there was a relationship. Um, and, you know, at the time I was just like, oh, this is what I want to do with audiences. I want you to feel like you both get to leave the real world in some kind of way so that you can kind of relax and let your hair down. But then I also want to hit you with something that um, that you take with you and that, you know, kind of feels meaty. It wasn't just a diversion, you know, uh, and all those classic rides really do that. Um, you know, so it's it's great to, to, you know, have an attempt at it. For sure. So. Um, the Haunted Mansion obviously has a very unique blend of spooky, humorous, and nostalgic. So how did you approach capturing the, that tone in this movie? Uh, it, it, just that. I, my, so many ways to approach that, but my touchstone was the ride. I mean, it it they accomplished quite a bit in that ride from a storytelling perspective. The ride itself is a blend of some incredibly subversive elements, some that are really celebrated and talked about by fans and some that no one really seems to talk about or notice. Um, there's some dark adult humor going on on that ride. And it's also adorable and kind of cute and kind of funny. And and it has moments that are really scary. Um, and it's all kind of the reason why you, I, at least the reason why I lean into the fantasy that it takes you on is because it has a real practical 
reality to it. Everything feels like even if you can't physically touch the ghosts, you feel like there there's a physicality to them. And and those were kind of principles that I took with me to the film and sort of, you know, instructed all the different department heads to keep following. Whenever in doubt, lean on the ride, lean on that debate that Disney had with his Imagineers about how scary and funny and whatever it should be. Lean on the the Pepper's Ghost effect and the the smoke and mirrors and the the classic production design techniques that have been kind of like pulling audiences into fantasy worlds, you know, since the beginning of cinema before we had CGI. Lean in on those things, like those those should be our priorities. And I feel like some of that DNA will just naturally come through. Yeah, I definitely love when productions choose to lean more on the practical effects. And I, I saw that that's something that was really important to you. So tell me about how you managed to use some practicality when filming. Well, it was kind of like everything, you know, I it's like yeah, we would talk a lot about Beetlejuice and we would talk about the haunting. We talk about Little Shop of Horrors. And it's like, look at all we can do right. before anything digital is even introduced. And and you we have to do it because if you just go, if you can just say, you know, that's a digital set, they're, they're just on a digital set. The stakes are just drained out of the whole thing for me. It just, I don't care. I just, I, I'm not, it's not even like animation. It's just, I don't, I just, I know they're just running around and they don't know what they're looking at. And, and obviously that stuff is necessary in modern filmmaking. Um, but I just really, I think audiences are, are kind of getting over that. And, and I certainly was getting over it as an audience member. Um, and then the other thing is, it's just more fun. It's just more fun to shoot with effects and camera and with, you know, for the actors to actually have tangible things that are happening to them. You know, there's moments in, in, in the movie where characters are like drug out of the, the, the mansion in, in these chairs. And the reason why they're the reason why Tiffany Haddish is terrified is because she's literally being drug out of the mansion by like, you know, 45 big dudes with a rope. You know what I mean? Like it just had it just hits different in the performances when what they're interacting with is actually there and is actually happening uh, when you can actually stare into the ghosts faces and look at all this wild makeup that's happening. Um, it, I don't know. It just leaves an intangible kind of mark uh, on the movie. Um, and then of course you take it, you know, to the digital effects wizards, you take it to, you know, ILM and you sweeten it and you, you enhance it, but then you, you already have something to build up off of. Right. It was so intoxicating to arrive at like a cut of this movie and to be able to see the movie, <laughs> like to not have to imagine where people were and what they were talking to. That was um, that was re really, really helpful, I think, in, in, in the process of, of finishing the film. Yeah, it definitely adds like so a bunch of life uh, rather than just speaking to like a green or blue screen, you know? Yeah, yeah. Which, again, unavoidable in some cases, sure. but um yeah, they let me build that house, you know, it was really cool to see like kind of grizzled veterans who have been building a lot of sets for a lot of years, you know, walk onto the set designed by Darren Guilford and 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 be like, this is one of the biggest, most uh, meticulously crafted sets I've ever been on. And I don't know that I don't have a frame of reference. This is my first big studio movie. Um, but it felt like that really mattered. Uh, and it felt like it really penetrated uh, the cast and the crew in making this movie. Tough. I'm excited to see that. So this is my final question. So I'm actually from about an hour away from New Orleans. So I was very familiar with that area growing up. Yeah. And in researching the film, I love how you made it a point to properly represent New Orleans culture, because I've seen it done before so many times in movies and TV, where they just slightly miss the mark. Um, yeah. So tell me why this was so important to you. Well, I mean, it's important for a lot of reasons. I mean, one, that's my, my family's from Louisiana. Um, and I spent a lot of time in Baton Rouge and Lake Charles and all those places. Um, and one of the tra one of the great tragedies about how we perceive the history of New Orleans is that, you know, New Orleans was populated by free people of color, you know, free Creoles of color, indigenous people, the Spanish, the French, all these cultures um, that really had this moment in time when they were colliding with each other and colluding and mixing and building wealth and doing all kinds of things that were not really allowed in other parts of the world or the country and from that you get jazz music and you get this amazing food and you get this sense that life and death and joy and ha all these things that don't belong on the same plate anywhere else that they just belong and we just figure it out and it's a little chaotic but it's fun too and it's exciting and 
I just felt like that wasn't, I didn't want that to just be patina. I didn't want that to be like, oh, it's a scary movie. And also it's in New Orleans. And oh, there, maybe the there's like a couple little cues of that. No, I felt like that was actually fundamental to understanding the ride and the appeal of the ride to, to accepting a, a movie in which these really disparate elements exist in the same space, you know, heartfelt uh, family adventure, humor, uh, laughs and, and real scares and real existential threat. I felt like if we did New Orleans justice, we actually do the movie justice. Um, that was my big, you know, uh, theory and mantra anyway, going into it. So that was important. And then the other side of it is just, you know, so many times black uh, people are, are sort of erased from the things that we helped to create. And I wanted when you looked at the photo, the, the paintings on the walls in the mansion and you looked around in these, but you saw black faces, you know, it's not just waltzers in my dining room it's waltzers and it's lindy hoppers and it's you know the kind of folks that you would see in a mardi gras parade and it's the full spectrum uh of culture that this 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 house is supposedly rooted in um that was just important to me on a personal level